guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna be looking at our duck blinds, uh, how they're set up and why we have them set up that way. And uh, we're gonna show you a few of our duck holes. And this is coming up, I would say, a month and a half from uh, duck season, it's first of October. So we're almost ready to hunt, getting close. So come on, let's uh, check out some of our duck blinds. Well, this particular blind is a one of our floating duck blinds. Uh, it's a cool story. Back in, I want to say 1980, in the early 80s, the river came way up. Phil gets in his John boat, travels 25 miles upriver, makes his way into a lake, a local lake here, which has had a bunch of big cypress logs in it. And he chained together 15 giant cypress logs and he floated those logs. It took him about a year, maybe a year and a half, but he floated those logs from 25 miles up river in a John boat all the way down to this duck hole. And we have, I think, six floating duck blinds that are floating on those very logs that he retrieved 40 years ago. <laughs> Pretty cool. In this scenario, we have a Floating blind, this one's floating on styrofoam, it's not floating on a log. So this is a very volatile area. It could, I'm standing here, it's dry as a bone right now, but two months from now, it could be 10 foot deep, depending on what the river does. So this particular hole is, uh, is the evening spot. Uh, the ducks tend to roost here, and uh, we leave it alone. We like to let them rest here, but uh, when they pile up, when there gets to be too many of them, uh, we, we ease in here and break it up. And so this bl particular blind is facing due east almost, east, southeast, which if you're going to hunt that in the morning, you don't want to hunt it on a sunny day because it's just miserable. But we set this one up for an evening hunt because of this particular hole. And uh, late in the evening, we always do better in the sun. The sun will be right at our back, northwest wind, ducks are coming right into the sun. It's a definite advantage for the hunter in that scenario. So always remember, keep the sun at your back, or at least you want them flying into the sun depending on what direction they're coming from. That, that will help you decoy a lot more ducks for sure. This is our evening hole, we call it the dog, because there's a little by back there called dog by. It's, a, uh, it's an awesome place to hunt. It really is. We've got a lot of good feed this year. We are in the drought. Well, if you look out across here, we have a lot of natural feed. And uh, this is uh, kind of a roosting hole. They, they like to roost out here for some reason. And, uh, and about once every two weeks or so, we'll make an evening hunt out here. And uh, the, we have rice levees. Uh, we planted rice one year, but all outside the levees is, is solid spangle top and a lot of beet sedge uh, came up. Um, good duck food. Phil says the natural feed is way better than anything you can plant because the Almighty made it. It does not rot. All right, this is the, the famous privet hole blind. This is my favorite place to hunt. Bill's favorite place to hunt. As you can tell, earlier I told you about those cypress logs. There's one of them right here. This blind has been here for 15 years. That log has had a blind on it for 40 years. We just keep building on top of the same logs. But this blind is in the center of our property. It's a little low out in the woods. And uh, Phil, and a couple other guys coming here with a chainsaw, cleared out a little hole in the woods. I'd say, you know, 150 yards long, 100 yards wide. They left a little island in the middle. It's a really, really cool spot. Um, there's not many things better than shooting mallards up close in the woods. And uh, this is what I call a decapitation hole right here. You get them in close enough to 
A lot of good memories right here. The old privet hole blind. There's Phil's corner. There's been a many a duck shot from that corner. A many of them. So in this particular case, we have the blind facing due southwest. So we hunt here in the mornings. We never hunt here in the evenings. The sun is coming back, coming up pretty much at our back, a little off to the right. Northeast winds are awesome. As you can see, we got it tucked in the corner right here. We got a lane here and a lane here. We put our decoys right in front of the blind, obviously, setting up for a southwest approach. Northeast wind, right down the pipe. So, and this one is brushed really well. It's tucked in. We have, we try to put our blinds where we'll have a blocker. Uh, so when the ducks approach, uh, they don't see the blind itself. We're tucked in behind these two trees. Uh, we, we use willows. We put willows um, before October. So the leaves hold good. And they, and they end up doing pretty good all year. And we'll come in and just cut out little holes. Just enough to get your gun barrel through. All right, moving on, y'all ready? Well, this is the infamous, or is it infamous? Phil calls it the pipeline floater. This pipeline came through, oh, years ago. And when they wanted to come through, Phil was against it. Completely against it. But then he got to thinking, wait a minute, that's going to make me another grass patch. So his thinking turned out to be right. This turned out to be one of our better holes. It's a mile long grass patch right down the north end of the property. And as you can see, it is just solid millet spangle top from one end to the other. But it looks really good. But as far as this blind goes, there's another one of those big cypress logs I was telling you about. That one come from a lake about 25 miles away. And it was on the train of logs that Phil floated down the river. And uh, we're still hunting on them to this day. In this particular scenario, this pipeline runs northwest to southeast. So when the sun comes up, it comes up on a hard right. So any kind of a easterly or westerly wind is perfect. You really, the wind at your back right here is, is decent. But in this case, instead of having the sun at our back, we got it coming up on the hard right. The best wind to hunt is a, a southeast wind blowing right to left. The ducks will come in from the northwest against the wind left to right. And this thing is really tucked on the tree line so it's, they do not see us. But this thing right here is, it's got a lot of good memories on that shooting porch. A lot of good memories. My favorite memory was two years ago, we had a veterans hunt. Had some of our friends uh, come in and uh, we made a hunt of a lifetime is what I would call it. Uncle Si had just gotten over COVID and we made an evening hunt here and the teal descended from the heavens. We had a bunch of about a thousand. It was crazy. But a bunch of vets in a blind. We had a big time laughing it up. Uncle Si got to discharge his weapon for the first time in a couple of months. And uh, that's a memory that I won't soon forget. I can tell you that. That, that one will stick with me for the rest of my life. But that's what hunting's all about. It's not about killing stuff. It's about making memories with family. Cherish those memories. Because you're gonna look up one day, your kids are gonna be grown, they're gonna move off. All your grandpas, grandmas, they're gonna leave the earth at some point. So make those memories while you can. Don't think you're too busy not to carry them hunting. So get out there and get after it. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed our little tour of a few of the duck blinds we have. Maybe you saw something that'll help you out when you go to build your duck blind. But uh, we love what we do. We cherish it. We don't take nothing for granted.
Thanks for watching.